believe that God continues to send prophets to mankind with the exact same message. Uh, because from our perspective, theology does not change. God does not change. What might change are the finer details of the law. Perhaps one prophet prohibited one food item and the other prophet allowed it. These types of things are negotiable, but theology does not change from prophet to prophet. Moses and Adam and Noah and, and, and Solomon and David, the same God is the same God. And the same attributes are the same attributes. Theology does not change. Uh, and so from our perspective, and again, this is important to note, uh, uh, and I say this with utmost respect, but we have to know our differences as well. The fundamental difference between Muslims and Christians is obviously over the persona of Jesus Christ. That is where, obviously, we have very different understandings. Uh, we kind of sort of agree on Abraham and Moses and Solomon and David. Both of us view them as mighty messengers and prophets and people who came to you know, spread monotheism and teach the law. Uh, and, and these are names mentioned in the Quran. People are surprised to discover that the most common prophet mentioned in the Quran uh, is uh, the prophet Abraham and the prophet Moses. These two are mentioned more than any other prophet. Uh, Jesus is mentioned almost 25 times by name. Jesus, the son of Mary. The only woman ever mentioned in the Quran, an entire chapter named after her, is Mary, the mother of Jesus. And the Quran is very explicit that God says to Mary uh, through the angel Gabriel that, O oh Mary, uh, God has chosen you and sanctified you and blessed you over all the women of the entire world, meaning of the entire creation. This is a verse in the Quran, I just quoted you the English uh, translation. So we sanctify, well not sanctify is an ambiguous term, we, we respect is the better term. Mm -hmm. We respect all the prophets and we consider them to be role models. Uh, and for our perspective, Jesus is a prophet of God, whom God sent in the same with the same message that he sent all the previous prophets with, uh, and he was sent to the children of Israel, and he was born of a virgin called Mary, and he was to be the final prophet to the children of Israel, because this is something I think the New Testament and the Quran agree upon, the children of Israel were veering away from the law, and they were disobeying the commandments, and they were finding loopholes or whatnot, and from the Islamic perspective, and I think the New Testament also mentions Jesus a bit irritated with some of the, uh, the children of Israel, there seems to be a frustration that they're not following what they're supposed to follow. So from our perspective, Jesus was sent as their final hope of salvation. Jesus is called in the Quran two things, either Jesus the son of Mary or Jesus the Messiah. Because for us Muslims, Jesus is the promised Messiah. He is the Messiah sent to the children uh, of Israel and he was born uh, of uh, the Virgin Mary and he came with the exact same message and teachings as the previous prophets. Monotheism, worship and love God with all your heart and obey and follow the law. This is the fundamental difference that Christians and Muslims have that it is important to recognize and I'm not here to convert even though honestly speaking we would be happy if, you know, conversion takes place because we have to be honest here. We're not going to mince our words. Right. I'm not here to convert, but it is important we understand these differences. From our perspective, Jesus is a monotheist. He is a Jewish Messiah who followed the law, observed kosher, was circumcised, did not come to abolish the law, but to fulfill and affirm the law. And Jesus never ever taught any doctrine that gave him a sense of divinity alongside with or with or however you want to phrase it. Jesus taught that he was a mortal and a human. Now when I mention this in churches, people get very surprised because never, never heard this. But to be a Muslim, you have to believe in Jesus. You can't be a Muslim the way we believe obviously, meaning if somebody says, I don't believe Jesus was born of a virgin, he's not a Muslim. If somebody says, I don't believe God sent Jesus, he's not a Muslim. If somebody says, I don't believe Jesus was a mighty messenger, he's not a Muslim. You have to love Jesus and, and respect Jesus as a prophet of God. And we assume, uh, or we uh, understand, excuse me, we understand, uh, and obviously this is where we disagree. We understand that notions such as redemption, and uh, abolishment of the law and the Trinity 
and and all of these crucifixion. Were, the crucif well, the crucifixion will come to in a while. Okay. Uh, we understand all of these concepts as having been introduced by other people. Muslim historians mention Paul, they mention Constantine, they mention the Council of Nicaea, they mention this and that. That's besides the point. The Quran is very explicit that Jesus did not preach the Trinity and he did not preach his own any type of divinity, and he came to fulfill the law and preach uh, uh, to the children of Israel. He wasn't really meant for the non-children of Israel. And one of the main differences as well is that the Quran, uh, and this is really bizarre from a secular perspective, like, uh, I mean, uh, I, I, I have trained in a seminary and my PhD is from Yale, so I have the religious side and I have the secular side. And it's interesting to compare and contrast to which I'm sure we've had discussions about this as well. Uh, from a secular perspective, people who don't believe in any, any religion, they're perturbed and intrigued by the Islamic stance on the crucifixion. Because it seems very bizarre and atypical. Like why would an Arabian man 500 years after Jesus hold these views about crucifixion? Uh, and they don't really have a solid answer for that. Uh, the Quran says uh, that do not say he was crucified. They neither killed him, they meaning the children of Israel, they neither killed him nor crucified him, but rather, and this is really ambiguous even in the Arabic, it was made to appear to them so. I just translated the Arabic. Yeah, what does that mean? It was made to appear to them so. Now, that's what the Quran says. Muslim exegetes, and this is not from the Quran, this is their interpretation. So I don't consider their interpretation to be divine, but yes, we are sympathetic to it. I am sympathetic to it. Muslim exegetes have interpreted that Jesus was not crucified nor even placed on the cross, but rather that God saved him. Now this is an interpretation that is mainstream. And they claim, this is not from the Quran, as I said, this is from later Muslim historians and theologians, they claim that Judas, the traitor, was punished by God to resemble Jesus, so that when the Roman soldiers entered the garden, they saw Judas, the traitor, and they assumed him to be Jesus, and they killed and crucified him, and that's a befitting end to a traitor, and so people assumed that Jesus had been crucified. And that's what the Quran says, it was made to appear to them so. Muslims believe, now this is the shocker that every time I say this, Christians are like, what, you guys believe this? Muslims believe, not only did Jesus not, was not killed nor was he crucified, he's still alive right now. Muslims believe Jesus is alive and he shall come back towards the end of times. And his return is gonna signal one of the last great signs and the great Armageddon and judgment day will come after his coming back. Muslims are looking forward to Jesus' return. Because when Jesus comes back, we believe his soldiers and his army will be us Muslims. We believe we will follow Jesus Christ. And we also believe, and this is in the Hadith or the Sunnah of the Prophet, that every true Christian will then recognize that they were incorrect in the Trinity and then follow Jesus as well. Right. So we actually believe Muslims and Christians will not fight against one another in the Armageddon, contrary to what some strands of Christianity are preaching. We believe that there's going to be a pagan or Ya'juj, and Ma'juj is a little bit advanced, I mean, a, 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 a foreign or a, a paganistic uh, you know, groups of people with the Antichrist behind them, and Muslims and Christians will be monotheists fighting behind Jesus Christ. So this is the respect and honor we give Jesus. Jesus is of the mightiest prophets and messengers, but from the Islamic perspective, he's not in any shape, fashion, or form uh, divine.